Hey everybody, welcome back to Half-Ass. I'm here with Andrew as always. Excuse my voice, I'm getting over the bug that went around here, like the plague. Uh, but, we have a really fun video in store for you guys today, where we're going to talk about bad guns. Whether you call them a PDW, or a sub gun, or whatever else. A bug out gun. Yeah. But before we get there, still have our giveaway going on, we're really close. We're super close to our 2500 goal. As of the time of this video, we're around 2200 or so subs. So, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. 500 rounds, brass case, 9mm, going to one lucky subscriber. We hit to 2,500 subs. Pretty excited, because then we have something else fun to give away. But oh, yeah. That's going to be a secret for right now. All right, getting into it. Andrew, you and I both have caught the bug at some point with bad guns. Absolutely. Mine started legitimately, and the whole purpose behind mine was the riots and pulling people out of cars when they were blocking their freeways and a lot of the civil unrest that we were seeing in predominantly 2020, the same time COVID was going on, but there's a lot of things throughout history you can look at of why you may need a bad gun, but why don't you kick off uh, what we did, why we did it, and the importance of it. Yeah, I got bit by the uh, the backpack gun bug really hard in like 2019 and Got, it got really reinforced in 2020 with all the riots and all the craziness that was going on. And I just got obsessed with, it's kind of this idea of what kind of capability can you fit in what kind of package. Yeah. So it's like the small, trying to get smaller and smaller with more and more capability. What, what are the trade-offs? And I've always been kind of a gear junkie. So when you get into bag guns, there's so much more gear to consider, like cool backpacks and different you know, tactile gami, the Velcro stuff. Yeah, I run Vertex, so I yeah. have the tactile gami stuff, which yeah. is really cool. It's it's just foldable Velcro. You can make hold stuff, but it works really well. It is cool, you know. So I got into it really hard. I started doing sub gun builds. I started doing foldable AR platforms. It all kind of culminated in uh, in me picking up a my first BNT which we did a lot of range footage with. Uh, I know you rock, you know, Scorpion, Strybogs, stuff Scorebog. like that. Scorebog. This is a Scorebog. And uh, I think just about everyone out there has probably done some sort of short little AR platform as well. I've messed with all the CMMGs, all that kind of stuff. It's it's such a fun thing to get into. Well, one of the things I see that's fun is uh, you see the, like, the doom scrolling on reels, and it's like, You've seen your truck gun. They've seen your shower gun. Now show me your back gun. Yeah. So that's a trend that's going around right now, too. And and people, I, half of my friends are like, who carries a gun in their backpack? And then you're the guy sitting there like. So, <laughs> and, and that's the thing is, like, one of the things we love to talk about on here is what's the practical use case? Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've always been a huge proponent of is your CCW pistol your concealed carry weapon is not a fighting weapon. Nope. It is an item that you use. It's a tool to try to save your life. Defend you. In the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. But it is also a tool that you should use to fight your way to reinforcements. So if, let's say, the apocalypse began and I'm out in the middle of town, my goal with my concealed carry pistol is just to get me to my truck alive. If I get to my truck, my B and T's in the bag. I got six mags. I got a combat loadout. I got a plate carrier. I got a helmet. I can fully gear. People are gonna think that we're nuts. <laughs> like, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So exactly, and that's where the question really starts to go. Is like, well. If you believe that there is some practical reason to have this, and if you if you want to set up some sort of bag gun or some sort of truck gun or a bug out gun, you know, a gun in a, a backpack that sits by the door that if everything went wrong, you could grab it and run to wherever you're going, and you know you have a serious upgrade in firepower on board, how do you set it up? What do you do? And it introduces the concept of new training drills, mm -hmm. which is what we tried to focus our range time on. Which yeah. What are, a lot of people will get a bad gun, and they'll never train with a bad gun. And then you run into the problems that we had. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some bloopers that are going to run through here, too, of eating bags across the range. Yeah. Going, oh, no, come back. Once you start getting into 
high stress and the clock matters and you got to be in weird positions, maybe leaning in a vehicle, maybe kneeling on a ground. Maybe your magazine doesn't fit in the gun in the bag, so you have to load the mag. You have to maybe mount a suppressor. It becomes a drill that involves a dozen steps where you can drop things. You can, oh, both of us at one point, we tried to put the suppressor on wrong three ways, and it only goes on three ways, you know, USB much. Yeah. So it leaves a lot of room for practice. And that is a really fun aspect of bag guns. It's a different way to train. It's a more fun way to train. And it's a new practical use case for interesting firearms. So bottom line it is you're obviously we all carry at least I'm assuming people that subscribe to the channel carry a gun most days. Most of us carry CCW. Your secondary job is to get you to your primary. Period. End up. Obviously, you don't see people walking around with full kit and ARs and shit like that. But the whole purpose of a handgun is to get you to a better option if you if the need arose. Mm -hmm. Like, and the things that I keep thinking about, like yeah, you saw in the cut in is lots of riots, lots of civil unrest, and again, not trying to to catastrophize anything. Chances of you being involved in anything like that are slim to none. But what happens if you are? And this, this is not a strange concept. Nope. If you go back all the way to, you know, post-World War policing, every cop carried a revolver on their hip, which was very limited in its capability, and every cop had a cruiser shotgun. You know, flash forward nowadays, every cop's carrying a Glock or an m and and every single police car has a trunk with AR-15s in it. Or shotguns. Or still shotguns. Again, it's a very poorly funded police department. Primary is, is not dedicated to a carbine. It could be a subgun. It could be a carbine. It right. could be a DMR. It could be a shotgun. I, I know a couple of police officers that actually have MP5s in the trunk or they have UMPs. They do have subguns in their trunks just because it's what the department had at the time. So let's talk about this real quick. We won't get too, too deep into it with the, you know, super highly educated tons of research side of things but there is a purpose behind a pistol caliber smaller gun and i think we saw that come to fruition most recently right in the 80s and it was secret service yep it made not a ton of sense to walk around with just a handgun you want to increase your force capacity the best way you can do that is by adding three points of contact and then extended magazines an optic system, whatever it could be. Yeah, much better aiming. Yeah, and what we really saw with Secret Service and where this whole thing, I think, really started for at least, not necessarily me, I'm too young for that, but was with Reagan. When Reagan got shot, you started seeing Uzis popping out of suitcases, backpacks, like underneath of uh, suits and stuff like that. And I think that's when the general public realized, like, oh, shit. Yeah, you started to see an explosion of the MP5K being worn underneath suits. You started to see uh, a lot of contracts popping up that where you saw the MP7, the P90. You saw the the BNT start to come on the scene, the What's UMPs. The, it's the great PDW slash subgun race. Right. So to categorize these two, PDW personal defense weapon, it is categorized as a small compact um, centerfire cartridge I don't want to call it rifle because most of these are SBRs or some sort of non-stock item. An SBR is a rifle. So, but a PDW could be a rifle cartridge. Sure. Subgun is, by definition, a pistol caliber round. Yeah. So that's really the big difference between a PDW, something like a P90, something like an MP7. Oh, God, I want one so bad just because I'm a, a video game kid. But subguns are 9 mil 40, 45. The funny thing is, is how often trends repeat themselves. So we saw this explosion of these platforms in the 80s. And then you saw this dichotomy form of like guys who had combat experience with real powerful rifles and guys who had combat experience with little subguns. And they would always kind of pick and prod on each other like, oh, an MP5 is not going to kill a man. Well, you need an M16. And then you start getting into, we get drastically away from that argument. And we, we understand that war fighting weapons are big weapons. And then something crazy happens. 300 blackout is invented. So now you can take this war fighting platform and you can scale it down very effectively to something like a PDW. 
And then you see Sig come out with like the Rattler, the cane brake. You see everybody building these six inch to nine inch 300 blackout folding ARs. And we even brought in, you know, something comparable to a Mark 18, which is what you you were shooting out there on the range where you did an assembly. Yeah, I think my fillings came loose. Yeah. And then I brought out the folding 300 blackout just to kind of show how we've we've actually kind of circled back to that trend of transportable force multipliers. It's very impractical to carry an M16 everywhere you go. And you and I both have a difference of opinion on this, which is great because everybody's going to have a different use case. Everybody's going to have a different reason and rationale behind why they're doing what they're doing. For me, you live in the country. I live in the city. I live really close to a major metropolitan city. You live where you can walk outside butt-ass naked and nobody's going to see you. Right. Right? So... Your whole thing is signature reduction. Absolutely. Quiet. You know, you are, you kind of built yours around not necessarily the apocalypse, but if people are doing wrong and you have got to get from point A to point B without being seen, heard, or anything like that, right? Right. In my situation, being in an incredibly rural area, if I was to use one of my firearms in a chaotic situation, it would incredibly expose me. Mm-hmm. I would essentially just be in the woods and people would all know, hey, shots just came from right there. Let's go find that guy. Whereas in an urban environment, it is incredibly easy to disappear or rejoin the crowd. Or in my case, in the kind of the way I, I built things around was I have the ability to go suppressed. So I have a suppressor on my backpack gun, which is the score bog. And it is quiet. It's not as quiet as your BNT, but it is quiet, and the signature is reduced. But at the same time, I also want, almost like when you run into a bear in the woods, I, hey, I'm over here. Leave me the hell alone. Right. I have a gun. You don't. Don't come try to take my shit, because I will protect myself to get from point A to point B, or my bug out, or whatever you want to call it. So my my take on it is, I want to be big, loud, and scary with the ability to defend myself, and they kind of adapt to a reduced signature, be a little quieter, but I can get away with a lot more because I'm in a more rural environment until I get to getting out of there. But Right, and that's why my subgun of choice is a 45 ACP, just because it suppresses so incredibly well, and that's why my, my little AR of choice is a 300 blackout for the exact same reason. It packs up well, it suppresses really well. Neither of these guns produce virtually any flash, and they're incredibly easy to implement in the field. And you are on the one-man army approach, i.e. you have enough stock to maintain your own setup. Exactly. I am under the assumption that being where I live, that that place is not going to be a, a hardened facility for very long, and I'm going to have to move. Again, this is catastrophizing. This is apocalyptic <laughs> type shit. That will never happen. But if it does... The job of my CCW pistol is to get me to my bag gun, and the job of my bag gun is to get me home. Yeah. And and that's kind of how I look at it. So mine is my CCW is to get me to my bag gun or to my truck where my kid is or whatever else, and then get home and then load up the rest of the shit and leave. <laughs> so, and come out near you. But that is, everybody's got a different, depending on their situation, where they live, whatever else. For me, I've always focused on the... Especially with as much driving as I was doing back in 2019, 2020, traveling a lot across major interstates that were getting. Oh, yeah. I was not going to be that guy that was pulled out of my vehicle, period. Yeah. And if I was, I was taking as many of those sons of bitches with me as I could. I remember uh, I was supposed to go to a meeting in Columbus in 2020. And I was I woke up that morning and I saw on the news that there was news reports of pallets of bricks being dropped in the middle of the night on o- on overpasses. Yeah. So they were like, hey, if you're driving under these overpasses, watch out for bricks being thrown at your car. And I just looked at my wife and I was like, we're not leaving the house today. Yeah. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we need to get into some of the stuff we we're doing on the range. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to, like I said just a second ago, we love to talk about really cool gear and really cool setups. But if you don't train with your gear, it's completely pointless and bag gun training is a perishable skill just like everything else and much more complicated to practice with so zach and i thought we came up with a lot of great examples 
And we're going to roll some footage real quick of you guys seeing us make all the mistakes in the world and trying to take out some targets in a high threat situation with our bad guns on the range. And then we'll be right back to get into what you guys really want to talk about, the bags. Because <laughs> everybody loves a cool backpack. All right, we'll cut to the range footage. We'll catch you back in a minute. Hey guys, welcome out to the range. We're about to do one of my favorite drills. I personally love bag guns and the whole concept of a bag gun. And one of the things I love about it is the idea of like a high threat environment is utilizing that concealed carry pistol to fight your way to an upgrade, okay? So the way that we have this drill set up out here, we have kind of an array of targets behind me and then we have a piece of cover over here. Now this could be your truck, your car, you know, the area that you've stashed your equipment. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna retreat back to this area, we're gonna holster our sidearm, and then we're gonna don our upgrade and then engage the targets in the high threat area. Now for the first couple versions of this drill, we're gonna do it real fast, real simple, with the gun already ready to go with minimal kind of parts and pieces and then we're gonna make it a little bit more complicated just to show how when you're feeling a little bit more stressed and you're feeling a little bit more rushed, there's more things to do, you can make a little few more mistakes and really add up to that time. So I'm gonna begin this drill with my pistol drawn, facing down range, and then I'm gonna kind of fall back and we're gonna go from there. Zach, you got me on the shot timer? Shooter ready. So something just like that, getting the gun out of the bag, engaging the targets, utilizing that cover, nice and fast, nice and simple. If you have a bag gun, you don't even need a range. The majority of the difficulty when it comes to this drill is just trying to get the gun out and get it ready as quick as possible without making any mistakes. Let's try that again. Shooter ready. Now we're gonna get Zach out here. We're gonna see what kind of sub gun he brought for us today. We're gonna see how he does. Shooter ready. Yep. All right, so you just saw Zach and I. I ran my BNT, he ran his Strybog. Those are our two favorite sub guns. We've had them hanging on the wall behind us for quite a while now. That was just getting the guns out of the bag and getting targets eliminated as quickly as possible. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a little bit more complicated and we're gonna try to suppress the guns and we're gonna try to throw a reload in there too. Now, we're not wearing any of our gear or anything, so that mag's just gonna have to go in a pocket and we're just gonna have to figure it out on the fly. So expect more mistakes and for a little bit more chaos to ensue. <laughs> So, a lot slower, a lot more moving parts. Gotta get that extra mag in the pocket, gotta get that suppressor on. My heart rate's a little higher. I feel like I made way more mistakes. Let's get Zach out here with the Strybog, see how he does.
So a lot of different gear, a lot of different use cases, different setups, build the gun, unfold the gun, add the suppressor, add the magazine. Well, a lot of that is dictated on what you're bringing to the fight to begin with, which is going to be that bag and that platform from which you launch all this stuff. Well, one of the perfect reasons of why you practice is one of the things I ran into on the range, which was my trigger died in my sub gun. And it was just a set screw in the trigger mechanism that came on. I run an Elfman trigger in that thing because it's really nice, mm -hmm. but they are temperamental. So we had to pause video for what, 10 minutes for me oh, yeah. to get that thing dialed into where it was running accurately. That would be terrible to do in a riot situation. Yeah, I had an effective bolt action. I mean, where I was able to use every other round because I had to immediately extract every other round. So this is why you run drills. This is why you practice. I mean, between that and then yeeting my, my AR mag across the range by ripping the bag open and it being in a, po a pouch that wasn't tightened down all the way. Right. And it went flying like five or six feet. If you were really behind cover and that happened, you would have a rifle and no, no, and no ammo. Way. And you would just be like trying to reach out there like a Looney Tune cartoon. The funny thing is, is that has actually happened to me before in previous attempts of practicing these drills. And it actually caused me to just turn my rifle mag pouches around so that when I rip the bag open, the, the mag is not facing outward. Yeah. So it really, th these are the kind of things you start to learn when you really start getting into these. Well, then another thing was, so I just built that guy, right? And I've had that kit for a while, but it's a 10.3. It's a Mark 18 sized SBR. But I have a brake to get, or a flash suppressor that's going on it to take a can, but I don't have it yet because I'm waiting on shims. Right. Well, my teeth are still loose from the, the just the concussiveness of that thing. That muzzle brake was quite rough. Yeah. I put something on it just so I could shoot it, but it's not how it's going to end up. I think the, uh, the best way to just talk about the gear is to kind of relate it to the holster debate, right? There's not a single guy out there that concealed carries a pistol that doesn't have a bucket of holsters in the garage mm -hmm. somewhere. If you get into bag guns, Inevitably, you're going to end up buying a few bags. You're going to end up buying different kinds of setups that go in the bags. There's lots of great companies out there. You and I both have landed on Vertex, though. Yeah, I have uh, some Vertex bags, some well, Mystery BMT Ranch. came with one, but... Yep, uh, I have some Mystery Ranch bags. I have a couple Savory Equipment bags. My big thing to look for in a bag is, is usually actually uh, zippers. It's got to have really high quality zippers because I want to be able to be mean to it and not break it. And the other thing I look for is that it doesn't have an overwhelmingly outward tactical appearance. Yeah. So I don't want to have a bag sitting in my car and then someone peek in there and the entire outside of the bag is covered in molly. And it says, gun, Glock, Smith & Wesson. I don't call 911 like all over the bag. Because someone's like, hey, I bet there's a gun in there. My real Vertex bag is very similar to the gray one behind me. I have a gay pride patch on it. One of the... Uh, one of the <laughs> What's the best way to get in concealment? One of the best uh, bags that I will carry my BNT in is just like a standard Jansport backpack. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. It's got a great warranty. It's, it holds together really well. That gets into the gray man theory. Don't, right. You do not want to stand out among the crowd you want to blend into it so yep. walking around with an uber tan like i am punisher patches sure. and nra patches and shit like that all over your bag you don't want to do that you want to in out be done something small so what i want to do though is vertex vertex is where we've landed you and i both think they're great products the zippers are great they're how they work is great the tactigami stuff's great so discount code in the description below to save 10 percent on a Vortex, or a Vortex, a Vertex item from EasyGuns.com. So we want to thank yeah. those guys for sponsoring this one, and you can get a discount on a Vertex product. But if you're interested in getting into the very dangerous world of bad guns, because it gets expensive quick, especially like you start talking about the kind of parts and pieces that go into building like a folding gun, they're generally always expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, adapting your gun to folding can mess with your gas. So that's, that's why I also prefer doing a pistol. A, it's cheaper to train with, or a pistol caliber. It's cheaper to train with. And when you're messing, you have a lot less recoil to deal with and stuff like that. And what's the chances you're going to need to take a two or 300 yard shot? 
extremely minimal. Yeah, you're talking 50 to 100 yards max for something like this in a defensive environment. Again, secondary to primary, primary to get you where you need to go to get the hell out of Dodge, right? Yeah. So you're not you're not out there actively looking for an engagement. No, you're, yeah, you're the, trying to hide. Yeah, the point of a bad gun is not to go to war. It's to it's to be able to navigate the war zone. Yeah, if you had to. And a hundred percent, it's I want to get the hell out of there, and I don't care about taking far shots. So, caliber is is up to you. Yeah, if the fight is far away from you, good. That's where <laughs> that's where it should be. Hundred <laughs> percent. Stay away from the fight. So we've covered PDW, sub guns, bad guns, the importance of it, practicing with it, doing drills with it. I mean, and you could practice some of this stuff. We caught some shit on our indoor range training video because apparently everybody's range is very difficult to deal with when it comes to training. But here at BSC, you could practice some of this stuff in the stall. I mean, from having a bag on a table, opening it up, manipulating it, coming up, as long as you're doing it safe. 90% of the of this bag drill that we just did. It can be done it, in your living room. It can be done in your living room. It involves no shooting. The shooting was just like our measure of time, yeah. honestly. So you could literally just take your gun out of the bag, get it ready, and click a stopwatch and be like, how long did that take me? Yeah. I'll do it again. Do it again. What we were concerned about was time to first shot. It yep. wasn't your splits in between. It wasn't how many targets you engage. It wasn't hits on the target, although we were both shooting really well. It was from gun out yep. to not even firing around, just going from there to safely holstering, getting behind cover, getting your shit out of a bag and go. You can do that in your living room, your kitchen. Yeah. You can do that anywhere without firing a single and, round. And there's uh, no excuse for not fucking practicing. And under almost perfect conditions with no mistakes you and i were both very similar around like 12 to 15 seconds to get the gun out and to get our pistol holstered and get the gun out and implement that was full out there that was suppressor on that was yes. the whole night and we but, that was when we were at 14s and 15s that was like can on everything yeah. else but in a real situation where your heart rate's through the roof, you're fumbling in the back of your truck. My heart rate was up. I'm too fat to run around. Maybe, maybe you just <laughs> ran to your truck. You know, in in a high stress situation, those times are going to be really, really bad. They're going to be really, really worse. But you don't want to learn. Where's my mag pouch? Where's my suppressor? You don't want to trial under fire. Yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to have to do it for the first time under the worst conditions. Yeah. So throw that throw that gun up on the couch. Do the drill, get up, get a dry fire in, click that stopwatch and just see. And see if you can beat that time. Just make it a game. Do it every once in a while. If you have your mag pouch in the wrong direction, you throw a mag across the room. Hey, fix that. That way it's not going to happen out in the real world if, God forbid, it ever comes to that. That's all we've got for you today. Don't forget, we have our giveaway going on. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for a chance to win 500 rounds of 9mm. We will be back next week for part two of the awaited the I guess the long awaited long awaited Mac DS9 video with special guests Monsoon Tactic. We have Vinny and Zach both coming on for that, so I'm super excited about that. It's back from the custom shop. It's sitting behind me right now. Yeah. So it's gonna be fun. Little Easter egg. But yeah. But we hope to see you guys soon. Thanks and take care.